Tonight on our globe, the answer to the international drug problem, a startling new look at a controversial policy in Holland that's drawing attention around the world. Coming up, those mysterious travelers called gypsies in modern day Britain. Can they tell their own future? Sunny Spain is known as a beautiful, peaceful haven for tourists on an often troubled continent. What isn't so well known is that Spain has its own problems with terrorism over the issue of the Basque extremists, which could threaten the Summer Olympics in Barcelona and the World's Fair in Seville. All coming up on Our Globe, bringing the world to you. Of information, a world of ideas, brought to you from around the globe. Hello, I'm Chard Hayward. And I'm Janet Zapala. Welcome to Our Globe, a show that looks at the world's diverse cultures, its people, their customs, the issues they face, and how they face them. Today, with the recent fall of communism and the sweeping changes taking place, our globe is more open to peace and true international understanding than perhaps at any other time in this century. That's right, Char. The purpose of this program is to bring viewers around the world a better understanding of each other and the human conditions that affect us all, wherever we live. In this episode, we'll be seeing three interesting stories from Europe. Our first involves the Dutch nation of Holland. You know, when most people think of Holland, what usually comes to mind first are windmills and wooden shoes, or those beautiful tulips. Or great artists like Rembrandt and uh, Vermeer, or that famous Dutch beer. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> what many people don't know is that although Holland is one of the smallest countries in the world, it's leading the way in fighting one of the biggest problems we all face today, drugs. For more on this story, we join reporter Mick Boskamp on location in Amsterdam. This is Holland, also known as the Netherlands, the tiny nation bordered by Belgium and Germany, most famous for its rich history, its trade and appeal to tourism. And this is also Holland, home to one of the most liberal and controversial drug policies in the world. Holland, a country that arguably may have the most radical drug policies in the world. To some it may appear the Dutch government takes a laissez-faire attitude towards the drug scene. But is that an accurate assessment? Here the government takes a less repressive, more pragmatic stance towards addiction. Drug abuse is treated as a health problem, rather than a crime. Richard Lancet, spokesperson for the official Amsterdam drug policy, cite some of the evidence to support their point of view. The total number of hard drug users has gone down the last few years. Um, not very much, but it is going down. And if you look at other countries in Europe, the number is uh, dramatically increasing. Dr. Van Brussels, head of the drug department of Amsterdam's municipal health services, points out the Dutch view that addiction should be treated primarily as a medical situation rather than a criminal one. It, the drug epidemic is a very uh, tragic public health problem because it occurs in many young people and an enormous number of young people die as a result of drug abuse. And that means it is a tragic medical problem. It's, uh, it's very shit to be addicted on heroin. I mean, uh, if you use it, if you try it once, uh, you try it your whole life. There's even a junkies union in Holland, founded in 1977 to take an activist stand in influencing public policy. René Moll, not an addict himself, is the union's coordinator. It is an organization uh, uh, in which participate users, ex-users and non-users. And uh, the meaning of the union is to make uh, politics, to, uh, to, to influence drug politics and AIDS politics. Well, what I've seen is that in the first years when, I, when we started here in this uh, field, 
we had a, lo a lot of opposition from uh, German-speaking uh, countries, especially Germany, but other, other, other countries as well. Now, under the impact of the AIDS epidemic among drug addicts, the situation has changed drastically. And that means that you find in a lot of uh, states and cities that our model has been adopted. For instance, in uh, Germany, in Hamburg, Hamburg, in Bremen, but also in Switzerland, etc. In the early 80s, the surrounding countries uh, in Europe, like Germany, um, France, Italy, and England, they always were very skeptical about our Amsterdam and the Dutch drug policy because they said we were too liberal, we were too easy, and we were giving very easy, in their point of view, a methadone to uh, hard drug users, and we were helping them too much. We were not repressive enough. I mean, the police wasn't in their eyes repressive enough. Throughout the years, we can see that the policy in Amsterdam worked. We can prove it by facts. The population has gone down. The average age has gone up. Uh, less and less younger people are using. These are only a few things that we can prove. According to statistics, the average age of hard drug users in Holland has gone up from 25 to 33. Fewer young people are becoming addicted, proving with facts that the Dutch policy seems to be working. But people like René are the tragic living proof behind the statistics. He's using drugs now for almost 16 years. I started up with me uh, 13, 13 years uh, with heroin. And uh, I started, I started uh, with coke with 14. The Dutch prefer to keep drug use above ground, where they can monitor, control, and treat it more effectively than by driving it underground in illicit trade. Part of the method involves the distribution of methadone and clean needles. I think it's very important to tell how the needle exchange program began in the Netherlands. It's, uh, uh, the Junker Union played a main role um, because then in the early 80s there was a gulf uh, of hepatitis. The normal medical world didn't respond adequate on it. And then uh, the Junker Unions, and especially the, the Amsterdam Junker Union, the MDHG, take the, take the initiative. Um, this initiative was taken over by the established uh, helping institutions. Um, and now you, uh, the result is that uh, 24 hours a day you can get clean needles in Amsterdam. Uh, the conception of uh, drug addiction as something, as a, as a chronic health hazard, which is not uh, curable but is manageable, is uh, being entertained in wider circles and it is gratifying, so to say. Yeah. But it is, it is uh, for instance, also, it is surprising why the idea hasn't occurred before because there are so many medical problems that cannot be cured but can be, be managed quite well. Uh, I name you uh, asthma, uh, diabetes, uh, hypertension, etc. There's, there's most medical pathologies, say 90% of medical uh, efforts are, is dealing not with curative but is managing preventive action. Uh, the first thing, if you want to make a policy, you have to know something about the group for whom you want to make a policy. And that's, I think, one of the probably the most important things about giving the hard drug users hair methadone. Why we have daily contact with the hard drug users? Because every day they have to come to a certain point to get their methadone. So that means that we can talk to them, get information about them, and make a policy about this group. But there is an even bigger, more important reason to attempt to deal with the drug problem successfully today. The threat of AIDS. It's, I can say, very difficult. I, uh, I had, uh, for about a half year, that I've been, uh, that I got the AIDS virus. Uh, that I got uh, um, that I'm zero positive, like the, uh, how to call it, and I uh, get it from using other needles, uh, using other needles from a friend. Uh, I thought it was a friend. He always 
uh, we, uh, we always used the needles when we didn't have uh, any clean. And then uh, I, I always ask him, hey, you got uh, your sick or something? And he said, no, 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 I'm, uh, I'm healthy. And in October this year, I did the test. And a month later, I heard that I had be zero positive. And it was a shock. It keeps you, it keeps you thinking, huh? And something, uh, so it's something difficult. I, I, uh, sometimes I don't know how to live with it. The Dutch are strong proponents of human rights. All governmental policies are weighed heavily with this in mind before they are passed into law. Sometimes walking that narrow path between human rights and a possible danger to society can be a difficult walk. Despite its liberal policies, Holland is not an international drug haven. Its tolerant laws apply only to its own citizens and not to foreign visitors. Commander Reitsma represents the police charged with enforcing the laws. We do have, in fact, a major drug problem. Uh, a lot of addicts, a lot of small drug dealers, and also uh, a lot of visitors from uh, neighbor countries like Belgium and, and France trying to buy their drugs in our precinct. The problems of security and drug smuggling fall under the responsibility of Mr. van Heiningen. We have uh, the world's largest harbor here uh, inside Rotterdam. When you talk about the international cargo, for instance, it means that every day around and about 8,000 containers are being shipped in into our port. That means uh, over approximately 3 million containers every year coming in and also going out of Holland. All kinds of goods are being transferred into Holland with destination Holland or destination somewhere else in Europe. The Dutch have a long tradition of trying to control narcotics rather than prohibiting them, dating back to the regulation of opium from the colonies in the East Indies. Eddie Engelsman, head of the alcohol, drugs and tobacco branch of the Ministry for Welfare, Health and Culture, explains some of its in history. In 1911 and 1912, the first opium convention took place. They also drafted the first opium convention. It was in Holland because Holland had some experience, long experience, was dealing with opium in a very pragmatic way in their colony in the, in the East, East Indies, which is now Indonesia. So the first opium convention took place in Holland, and it was for the first time that all states wanted to regulate something. Because of the Dutch experience and the Dutch tradition, the convention uh, charged also the Dutch authorities with some responsibility to to make sure that all the states would implement this new convention in a proper way. And that uh, has been taken over by the League of Nations uh, in the 20s. Today, the source of the problem remains international in scope. Rather than just a domestic one, it can be solved internally. It's obvious that when you're talking about narcotic drugs in a global way, it's a very big problem and a difficult problem. You're not only talking about the situ situation we have here in Holland as a consuming uh, side, but you're mostly talking about the things that are happening in the producing countries. And they're not the most rich countries in the world. And you have to look upon the problem as a whole, the producing countries, the transport in between, and also the consuming side to find some way of, of solution to solve the problem. When an addict uh, knows that he will not be uh, prosecuted just for the fact that he has drugs for his own use, he uh, will be uh, not so eager to uh, get more drugs. Uh, I, I hope I'm, I'm clear. Let me give an example. I don't know if you're a smoker or not, but if you're a smoker and you have no cigarettes in the neighborhood, you, you, you get uh, very uh, um, upset. If you, 
even if you decided not to smoke, if you decide not to smoke, but the cigarettes are here, you can keep uh, that, that very much longer because if you want to, it's there, you, you can take it. So it's, it's, you can slow down in, in using uh, cigarettes. Well, that's an effect we see with drug users caused by our policy. They know that police will not arrest them just for the fact that they have drugs for their own. So they, they buy less drugs, they uh, uh, have to uh, uh, make less uh, criminal offenses to get money for it and it's, it's giving a much easier uh, scene. And what we see in history, that when a substance is used by local people, like opium, and there is no repression towards us, people can, let's say, maintain their habit and do it in an integrated way. As soon as states, governments, try to influence it and make it illegal, prohibit it, it always creates a, let's say, a stronger, a stronger quality, a stronger substance. Heroin was the result of the repression of opium. A crack was the result of the repression of, uh, of cocaine. Uh, more and more people uh, are realizing that war on drugs can be no solution and is causing perhaps more trouble than, uh, than that it does good. And by the way, that's, that's maybe the most important thing for politicians. It's, uh, it's very, very expensive, and it may be getting so expensive that it can't be paid anymore. And then politicians start to think most of the time. Only a few years ago, Holland's drug policies were not taken seriously by other governments around the world. Today, many countries are taking a closer look at those same policies. I'm Mick Boskamp, Amsterdam, Holland. That policy seems like a fascinating and viable alternative, but I wonder if it could work here or in other countries. You know, Janet, I think the most important thing to remember in a story like this is that no one is advocating or even condoning the use of drugs. Well, it's hard sometimes to separate the moral question of approval or disapproval from the practical necessities of dealing with this kind of a problem. But the Dutch approach does look like it's working and certainly holds some promise for the future. We'll keep you posted. Absolutely. And next, we are off to England for an illuminating look at an intriguing group of people whose future is, at best, in doubt. Gypsies. <laughs> We've all heard the legends about gypsies' magical powers or gypsy curses and fortune-telling abilities. And that old cliché about how infants were stolen by gypsies. Well, in this report, we'll find out the truth behind the myths and legends concerning gypsies in Britain. Our Globe's Nicola McAuliffe has more for us in this report. 